Hello everybody, chapter eight, the twist in the bodyguard's tail. I'm sorry, I'm not in my shed at the moment because um, the internet is so bad at the moment, it's taking forever to upload things. Anyway, so chapter eight, the twist in the bodyguard's tail. No, whispered Hiccup, it's not true. Yes, replied Hiccangasang, I'm afraid it is, and the story gets worse. Oh, how can it get worse? <laughs> Now I was going to ask the same question as Hiccup. Uh, how can it get worse? Asked Hiccup through white lips. Your father did manage to steal the stone. He found it inside the volcano, which is why the lava had never discovered it before, despite digging holes all over the island. But what Al told me was that the fire stone released certain chemicals that kept the volcano dormant. <gasps> Without those chemicals, over the last 15 years, the volcano has become more and more active until finally, right now, it's ready to blow. Mm. Hiccup said, lost in thought. While they were talking, the blackness at the window had turned to grey and then turquoise and the sun was coming up fast on what would be another roasting day. This terrific owl of yours, asked Hiccup, what is he doing now? But it's got a bit of banana since you mention it, but Hiccup But then the poor chap has had a difficult time of it. Muggers returned to his tail. Shortly after, Terrific Ta'al returned as a prison guard, and as the rumbles from the volcano were going louder and louder, the exterminators did start to hatch. The lava louts abandoned the island and left us prisoners to fend from for ourselves, and we too made a bolt for it, all except the Terrific Owl. He's got this wild idea, and he said that he's going to train these creatures. He's brought these gigantic statues all over the island, and he seems to think that when the exterminator is hatched, they will think that he is their leader and will do everything he says. What's he going to do with the um, exterminators once he's trained them? asked Hiccup. Good works, he says, replied Hiccup. No, shaking his head in admiration. He thinks he's going to stop them from killing everything in sight. Oh, he's a lovely, lovely guy, that terrific owl. <sighs> Even if he is as mad as a loon. Well, I tried to persuade him to leave with me, but he wouldn't. And that was when he asked me to do the favour that I promised him all those many years ago. This is the exterminator. And you can see they're just not very nice. I don't even have to have met one to know that it's not very nice. Their rogue speeches, dragon, are exceptionally da dangerous. A pack of exterminators lays waste to an entire landscape by precise setting. Far for it. They have large sword-like talons and two hearts. They kill for the pleasure of it. What was the favour? Asked Hiccup. To kill you, replied Mangusly Hotshot. He said you were the Prince of Darkness, the devil child, who'd grow up to bring untold evil on the archipelago. He told, said you had fed him to this monstrous strangulator that made all his hair fall out and thrown him out of a balloon into a sea full of ravenous shark worms. That was all his fault, protested Hiccup, who's beginning to put two and two together. Have you guessed who this terrific owl might be? Mm -hmm. but as I forgot to know you over the last couple of weeks, I've gradually begun to think that he must be mistaken in you, said Among Us. I tried to kill you, but I kept on saving you at the last minute. At first I thought it must just be my heroic impulses kicking in, but then I realised I like you, Hiccup. Thank you, said Hiccup. I'm not angry with you for about what happened. I'm not even angry with her. Well, maybe I am just a little bit, admitted Hermongous. And why she had to marry that barbarian stoic, I will never know. That's my father you're talking about, warned Hiccup. And he has many excellent qualities once you get to know him. Well, I hate to let good old Al down, said Hermongous. But you seem to me like to be like a good egg. And I think that Al has just got off on the wrong foot with you. What does he look like, the, that terrific, terrific Al of yours? Asked Hiccup, already sure that he knew the answer. Fifteen years ago, when I first met him, he was extremely handsome, replied Hiccup. Humongous, tall, dark, took very good care of his moustache, even in jail conditions. He had all of his limbs at the time, which took, limbs at the time, but now he's bald, he's put a bit of weight on, he's got a hook instead of a hand, a stump, instead of a patch, instead of an eye. Up and the treacherous as I live and breathe, interrupted Hiccup. You've gone and given your, your heart, ruby heartstone to Alvin. Alvin the Stretcherous was Hiccup's arch enemy and the wickedest, most dangerous man in the archipelago. Hiccup had assumed he was dead when he fell into the sea with those shark worms, but Alvin was a difficult man to kill. This meant that Valharam was not the traitor that Humongous thought tra traitor that Humongous thought her. Alvin would never have delivered that ruby heart stone. He would have pocketed it himself and then made up all these wicked lies that he told Humongous about, her throwing it into the ocean. Alvin the who? asked Humongous blankly. I don't know who you're talking about. What the dog is.
Alvin the Treacherous is the evilest man in the archipelago. So here come. Now then, that's not fair. Al has got you wrong, Hiccup, but you must admit, who can blame him what with the shark worm incident and everything? Says Humongous, I just know if you guys could get together, you would really get along. Hiccup sat thinking, wondering what he should do next. Now I understand why old Wrinkly is sitting at the bottom of that hole, said Hiccup. Who is old Wrinkly? asked Humongous. Old Wrinkly is Valhalla Rama's father, said Hiccup, and my grandfather, he must, he must have been the one who set you the impossible task of finding the fast den. Ha! said Humongous bitterly. This whole mess is his fault in the first place. Well, he obviously feels that too, said Hiccup. About a month or so ago, he started talking about some doom coming on all of us. Now, it was all his fault because he had interfered with fate. And then he said he was going to take a vow of silence and sit in a hole until the whole thing was over for good or worse. So he couldn't interfere again. None of us took a lot of notice at the time, said Hiccup, because old Wrinkley can be a little eccentric, but suddenly it's all crystal clear. I'm going to go and get his advice, which will be diff tricky because he's taken a vow of silence. But I have to try. Hiccup woke up toothless, put the sleepy little dragon on his shoulder and turned to Humongous. Are you coming? You are still my bodyguard. Humongous blushed. Are you sure, sure you still want me to be your bodyguard? But of course, said Hiccup. I think you are an excellent bodyguard. Even when you were trying to kill me, you did a wonderful job of saving me from yourself. Will you shake hands? Humongous Lee Hotshot's sad face like when he smiled. They shook hands. And then, oh, that's that exterminated. Time is ticking my way, the volcano is shaking me daily. One day it shall shake me right out of my shell and I shall blaze forth with scorching red talons and then flames shall lap like water down the mountain sides. The trees will be crackling candles, stroking the sky with fiery fingers and I shall turn all the flowers and small things into cinders and beautiful.